Uh, before we get into the technicalities of what this mission means for India, how will we move forward, what will the success mean, what are you looking forward to the most? Hi, so I'm looking forward most because of this Spanyan Kui is they have tried because we have already uh, landed. They have tried landed and uh, even instead of seeing it as a failure, we have taken it as a motivation to do better. So I'm pretty much looking forward to it because we are the we will be the fourth country to land on it. Uh, more as well as if we do it properly, then we can explore like more about the moon. We can even start. We can also think about lunar colony. Uh, since we will be finding evidence, we already know that Chandrayaan one has found evidence of water in the South Pole region. So this would be a start point for more exploration as well as uh, more exploration to other planets as well. So this is what I'm looking for. Okay, before we bring in our other guests also as we try and establish their connection, Shruti, as we said, a billion hearts today are beating for this to be a success. A short while ago, I just broke down the details in terms of where will this put India on the map as far as the future explorations are concerned. First, let's talk about the location that the scientists at ISRO have narrowed down, which is the South Pole. There seems to be a lot of curiosity around that location. Why does it become so crucial? Is it because the possibility of water that could add a fillip to the future space explorations? Yeah, that, that is another reason. One reason is we have found water in the uh, South Pole region and also it is one of the regions that no other uh, country has explored yet. So this is a new place. So if you get any information, that information will be useful for further missions. And this data, whatever data is, uh, which Shandhanti is going to collect, that data can be used for other countries as well, for the future mission. So with, uh, the place, the great, so the, actually the landing area has been increased uh, after Chandrayaan 2. Earlier it was 500 square meter, but right now for Chandrayaan 3, uh, the landing area has increased to 4.2 kilometer, the uh, square, uh, kilometer area. And this landing uh, area is so crucial because you have found evidence of water and that is the reason we are looking for it. Okay, Shruti, we'll just request you to stay on with us because we also have Akash Sinha, who's also a space scientist, now joining us on the broadcast. Akash, good to have you with us here on CNN News 18. You're somebody who's also worked very closely as far as the lander and the rover is concerned. First, help us understand, and this is important for our viewers as well, what really has changed from Chandrayaan 2 to Chandrayaan 3? Yes, we do know that in terms of the elements, the orbiter is not there this time around because that's all already hovering as far as the exploration is concerned. So what are the crucial modules that we are seeing this time in Chandrayaan 3? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, you know, before I begin, I do want to also emphasize one big thing about, in general, about all our Chandrayaan missions is that, see, uh, we've been going to Moon, NASA and European Space Agency and all others for like 50 years now. But it was in India's Chandrayaan mission that eventually found water on moon. Mm. And since we found water on moon, there's been now a new moon race. Now everybody's trying to get to the moon. And it's also important to understand there is a huge amount of water. You know, the estimate that is there is that just on the polar regions, there is about 600 billion kgs of water. Now this is enough to fill something like a dull lake. Mm. And that's why it's a big deal to get there. We might be able to establish human sure. colonies there. We might be able to establish a space station. We might hmm. be able to build rocket fuel out of there. Hmm. And this new moon race has been started by India, uh, by hmm. India's finding when we sent the Chandrayaan. Hmm. Now, coming to uh, what has changed in Chandrayaan 2 and 3. Uh, so, last time when we sent, we had a very... Uh, you know, a very restricted view on making sure that we succeed and we wanted okay. to land in a very small amount of area. Now sure. we made a lot of changes in the software and the software changes have made it in a manner so that this is, you know, what is known as a failure based design. Now mm. we are tracking every failure and trying to see what is our backup on that. Huh? So amongst some of the failures that could have happened or, or you know, probably happened last time was okay. that when we fired our engines trying to land, they probably generated a little more thrust than that sure. was needed. It meant that our uh, uh, lander went a little too fast. Okay. And then when it was trying to correct itself, yeah. 
there was also a restriction on how quickly it can correct its orientation huh? so if i just have that to put this for layman language it is that the velocity was a concern as far as the landing is concerned